Hello, everybody. Oh, you're going to hate me for this. Everyone's got to stand up. You need to not roll your eyes. Everyone up, everyone in the back. Okay, now maybe hold hands. Hold your neighbor's hands. Who doesn't love folk music? Come on now. Is everyone there? We're going to do one quick song. Sing along with me if you know it. Do you really think we're actually going to sing a song? Sit down. I just had a bet to see if I could get you all to stand up. Folk music is not my forte, <laughs> with the skull tattoos and all. Thank you all for coming. It's exciting to be here. Thank you, Helen, for the introduction. Uh, when I was 17, I started my first blog post. Boy, I thought it was hilarious. Um, since then, I have been in radio. I've been in a little television. I've done some writing. Um, took a step back into old school print publishing which was a mistake, uh, got back into digital, got back into radio, and now I've sold out to the man a bit, and so I manage brands uh, corporate from the national and to the local level. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about the individual. And so today, everything you make sucks until it doesn't. I'm specifically talking about content creation when I talk about everything sucks. And more importantly than that, we're gonna talk about ego. So we're gonna use words like vanity, Pride, you know, feeling terrible about yourself. Good, good heartedness. That's what we're going to do today. And so when we're talking about your ego. We're talking about, uh, there's this old saying that I love, and this is the, the reason a lot of people hate media people, or not everybody, but some. Uh, there's this old saying, uh, without self-love, there's no love at all. And some people hear that and they roll their eyes because I have the ego the size of Texas. And uh, to me, what that means is if you can't like your own work, if you can't like what you make yourself, then how you can expect a room to like it. So more importantly than ego, we're gonna talk about content creation. What is content creation? This is how I define content creation. Anything that you need your brain, your mind, to edit, to spark, to re-edit, to meld, and it comes through your fingers, and it comes out through a wide variety of, it could be, you could be a blogger, you could be an artist, you could be a musician, photographer, uh, podcaster, anything that you need your mind to then let the world digest. And digest in the world can be, your world can be Rapid City, your world can be South Dakota, your world can be fans of banjos, it can be the world if you're that ambitious. Anything your mind makes to then put out that comes in some form of art or some sort of digestible content. That's what I call content creation. Every content creator needs to walk this line. It's, it's, you'll forever walk it from the first thing you make to the last thing you make before you die. And hopefully you're creating content that long. You need to have enough ego to put something out there and then realize you're going to get some shit about it. <laughs> but then you have enough humility in the gas tank to then take that shit because you're going to get it and you're going to get it forever. And it's, and it's never going to go away. We just need to walk that line. So, so ego the size of Texas, humility to take it. It's very important. So when we're talking about this first step of content creation, you're a photographer, you decide you want to be a photographer, you want to get into radio, you want to be an author, the last great make no money profession, you'll, you'll take this picture as, as if Ansel Adams came down himself and, and touched your camera. You'll make this comedy album, maybe you're a comedian, and it makes everybody, you think it's going to make everybody laugh until they bawl. You write this poem and it's beautiful. But it's in your own world yet, you haven't shown anybody. And so every content creator is going to take this first step right before you hit publish, right before you hit post, right before you hit send, right before you give it to somebody. This little voice pops into the back of your head. This is terrible. Don't show this to anybody. <laughs> Don't show this to Andy. This, is, this sucks. This is terrible. Don't show this to anybody. Your friends are going to hate you, and your parents are going to think you're stupid, and you will never make love to a woman again, <laughs> which might be my own version of that. 
I'm, just, I'm sure I'm editorializing. That's doubt. That's healthy doubt. You need that doubt. You need that voice. It makes you better. It makes you re-edit. But eventually you need to get past that. You need to push that down. You need to get rid of that doubt. You need to hit publish. You need to hit send. You need to put that out there. Knowing it sucks. Both it sucks in the beginning. But that's fine. That's good. That's how you start. That's your baseline. That's your initial plateau that you're going to climb over. So after that first terrible step, and none of those things happen, your friends will still like you, and your parents will not think you're worthless, and hopefully you eventually make love to a man or woman again. You're a content creator now. Now you're making things. Now you have a YouTube channel. Now you have a website. Now you have a book. Now you have an album, song, whatever you've been creating for some time now. And you'll be out and about, and, and uh, you'll be in a social setting or a bar or a church or a bookstore or whatever your social setting is. And some stranger will come up to you. Hey, I listened to your thing. And initially you get red and hot and awesome, and it's, I have a fan. And it's not a family member that I have to see on Thanksgiving that had to watch it. I have an actual fan. I've never met this person in my life. But sometimes someone else will come up and they, they will say, I like this but. But, what's that but word? Because that but word means there's something coming after. And that after is not, everything after the but sucks. You don't want the but. Because then your friends aren't going to like you, and your parents are going to think you're stupid. They were, blah, 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 you know the rest. You need that. You need that critique. You need that humility. You need that ego on the flip side. For a variety of different reasons. The difference between a true content creator and the person who just posts about their cold food on Facebook is, is this. Because the, this, the initial, I didn't think about it for a second, and I just post it because I think I'm funny, and I put it on Facebook. That's, that's easy to do. Anybody can do that. Also, we live in this time now with all of this technology. You can spend years making this opus that you hope everybody will love. And in two seconds, somebody can go, that sucks, on Facebook. So you got to be able to take that. Because it's not all bad. In those, in those complaints, you'll hear something, if you listen strong enough, that will make, let you make tiny incremental changes to whatever you are creating. Maybe you need to use a different sentence structure. Maybe you should learn how to play guitar before you start making music. Maybe you're not as funny as you think you are. <laughs> Always, if you can ask many of my friends and family. Uh, you need that critique. You need to be able to take that critique. So realize the following. You're always going to live in this world, on this side and on this side. And on this side, you're always going to have this doubt internally in your own mind. This sucks. I hate this. It's good. You're going to need the edit. You make it the first time and you never make any edits, you're just going to suck forever. That's the plateau. You need that internal doubt. But you've got to put that doubt away eventually. And on the flip side of that, you're going to get critiqued forever. Good. You want it. It's healthy. Knock you down a peg. But it's more than that. In that tiny incremental critique, you'll get better. Once again, past the plateau. So if you're going to make things, you're going to live in this world of suck for, you know, ever. It's just going to, you know, be there. Doesn't mean your work is always going to suck. What you make is eventually going to get better. Ask any comedian. They bombed for 10 years before they were great. Uh, I sucked now. <laughs> you know, the, you, you get better though. You got to start with a baseline. So I just wanted to end with a little bit of a list here, if I can. We know about the first couple already. And the first is everything that you make sucks until it doesn't. And know that there's an and doesn't. Some people will get it in months, some people will get it in years. But there is an end doesn't, and it's good. Then know that you're going to take criticism, and that's going to suck until it doesn't. So those two things are good, and I can't repeat that enough. But then there's this next step, and you're going to know when it happens. Eventually, you're going to be able to stand up, wake up one morning, have this epiphany. Hey, I'm, I'm good at this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm good at this. It's great. And if you think you're there and you're like, well, maybe I'm good at this, you're not there yet. One day you will wake up in whatever art you are creating or whatever you are publishing, and you will know you're good. And that 
plateau breakthrough is fantastic because then you realize how far down the road from great you are, which sucks again. You repeat this cycle over and over. Once you know you're good, then you know you're not great, then you know you got to keep going. So maybe you're funny, but you can be funnier. Maybe you're smart, but you can be smarter. Maybe you are a fantastic artist, but you know your trees, not quite. You're getting there. <laughs> You'll know when that happens and take the next step. It's um, you know, alleviating the, the plateau is what we're looking for here. The next thing I'd like you all to do, especially for you younger people, maybe you're in the beginning stages of thinking about maybe being a content creator, you need to diversify a little bit. So if you want to be an author, learn a little bit about web design, learn a little bit about graphic design. And it's less about self-sufficiency and saving money in your own project. The diversification of your talents then allows you to find out what you actually might be better at. That blog post when I was 17, which I wish I could find, but it was probably on some GeoCity site that doesn't exist anymore. Oh, I thought I was funny. I was, I'm Carlin, 17 years old. Grew up in a pig farm in town, 800 people. I'm hilarious. I have a world view. No, I was wrong. <laughs> Turns out I also can't spell where the shit. <laughs> so writing is going to be hard. But I diversified. Got into web design. Kind of sucked at that. Found radio. Good at radio. All right. This is my speed, this is my jam. Microphone, big ego, perfect. I have it. So diversify a little bit, and, and, and it's good for you because you'll suck at a few other things and that's also healthy. Once you have diversified, then hyper-focus, which is a flip of the coin. Once you find your thing, focus on that thing. Grab onto it tight like a rodeo bull. Do not let it go. You need to hyper-focus on that thing and get better at that thing. In the words of the great Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreation, don't half-ass a bunch of things, whole-ass one thing. <laughs> That's good for you. One of the most important parts, and no one wants to do it, and it and it's, might be the suckiest of the suck, you need to practice the unsexy parts of what you are creating. The edit. There's beauty in the edit. There's beauty in the revision. There's awfulness, but beauty, after you're done. When you're 40 hours into a project and you thought it was going to be great, it's not. And you wake up one day and you're like, this sucks, we have to start over. This is awful. It's the unsexy part. You got to focus on the unsexy part. It's the only way to make the sexy part better. Sexy part, by the way, never includes money. Let's quash that right now. You're, you know, blogging is not your parents' idea of how you're going to make that money. Uh, but it's not about the money. It's about the creating. So focus on the unsexy parts. Focus on the revision how to make it better. Once again, we're keeping that plateau from happening. We don't want the plateau. We want the next step. I'll end with this. Everyone's got a timeline. You need to follow your timeline. Everyone's timeline is a little different in everything that they're going to create. Uh, and there's different timelines. Uh, there's, there's technology timelines. I'll, I shan't be pinning anything on Pinterest ever. This is not going to happen. <laughs> that technology has passed me by. I'm 34. It's not going to happen. Um, but it's not just technology, it's more about setting goals. So if you want to be a comedian, how long until you're on stage? How long until you turn 10 into 20 minutes? You want to be an author, how long until your first chapter is done? How long until your first book's done? How long is it going to take you to do the revision? You want to be a musician, how long is it going to take you to get up on stage? And then after you're on stage, how long is it going to take you to make a single? YouTube exists for a reason. It's, you don't need a studio, you need a camera, and a voice, and a guitar, and bar mine. <laughs> Set goals. It's fine if you don't meet them. Try to meet them. That's the importance of it. Follow that timeline. Once you break those goals, set new goals. Follow your timeline. Then after you've done all of these things, and after you've sucked for an incredibly long time, and it's going to seem much longer to you, I assure you, make some content. Just make it. Just keep making it. And keep making it. Then make it some more. Then you can send it to me. And I'll critique it, and then you can see if I'm a moron or not. <laughs> but just make it, and I thank you for listening.